You're watching Sports Force Extra on KTIV. Welcome back, folks. Playoff football, not the only exciting action on the line tonight. On the hardwood in Nebraska, Siouxland teams, they were trying to keep their seasons alive at the NSAA State Volleyball Yeah, that's tournament. right, Jason. And it was a great slate today. Six Siouxland teams competing in the state semifinals. First action of the day brings us to Class D2. The fifth seeded Why Not Blue Devils taking on Cambridge. Blue Devils working to climb out of a deficit. Kenna Oligmuller taps it over the net. Trojans can't stop it from hitting the deck. Now in the third set, why not down 2 nothing? but here comes the hammer of Kayla Pinkelman to get the kill and the point for the Blue Devils. Up big in the third, looking for the set point to stay alive. Once again, it's Oleg Mueller with the perfect cut. She taps the ball, finds the hardwood. Fourth set, the Trojans looking for match point and they find it with a perfectly balanced hit from Berlin Springer. Why not falls 3-1, to one, but they play tomorrow in the third place game against Meridian. Couldn't be more proud of them and they can't hang their heads, but tomorrow we do, we get another opportunity and we have seven seniors on the team. So it's one more opportunity for them to play um, and hopefully send them out with a win. All right, up to class D1 where the first seeded Guardian Angel Central Catholic Blue Jays squared off with fifth seeded Amherst. First set, Gak trailing, but Jocelyn Stola powers through the kill. That. It's a point for the Blue Jays. They're looking to close the gap on that scoreboard. Set two, Blue Jays trail 1-0. Senior Kelsey Steffen doing her part to try and will the Blue Jays to the state championship with a beautiful cross-court hit the Broncos couldn't handle. Set point, set two. Broncos, Sid Mao comes up with a huge block. That makes it 2-0 on the number one seed in D1. Broncos have a match point here for the sweep. And Key Hagen gets an ace after miscommunication. Guardian Angel Central Catholic falls short of the D1 championship match, but they have a third place game tomorrow. We, we get one more opportunity to play together. We get one more opportunity to win and to end this season um, with a win. You know, third best in the state is still something. You know, everything we've done this year, I don't want it to end because we had one bad game and then turn into, the, you know, another bad so now the Blue Jays will play the loser of this one between EPPJ and SEM. The winner will advance to the D1 State Championship. First set, both teams neck and neck. Great kill by Kate Zwingman there. And that gives the pack momentum early. Again, first pack on the attack. And Ashlyn Scharf lays down a kill right out of the reach of the SEM defense. EPPJ drops set one, but early in set two, they come out swinging. It's Zwingman once again sending it to the Mustangs defense. They can't handle it. But the pack drop set two, and now the Mustangs have match point. Kaylee Jackson lays down the kill. That sends the Stangs to the state title game, and the pack will head to the third place game against Guardian Angels. Overall, I looked at the girls, and we're top four in the state. Like, that's nothing to hang your head about. Nothing to hang your head about. You got a game to prove yourself again tomorrow, so let's refocus and get ready to hopefully battle it out tomorrow. Last C1 action, top seeded Carney Catholic and the Pierce Blue Jays. First set, Pierce looking to get some points on the board. They trail the stars and here comes the kill. Nora Harrion to get the Blue Jays moving in the right direction. Stars take set one, but here comes Pierce in the second. Hadley Collison with the perfect touch and the stars can't quite get a handle on it. Pierce takes set two. Carney Catholic takes set three, 25 to 29. But how about the Blue Jays showing some fight? There they go. Pierce gets the point, and we're headed to the fifth set. 16-15 in the fifth. Stars lead, and Aubrey Mandarock gets the kill. Stars advance to the C1 title game. Pierce will play in the third place game at 9 a.m. tomorrow. I'm so, so proud of them. Obviously, you know, a couple match points there have been really nice. If one of them could have tipped in our favor. Um, I don't know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Carney Catholic is, a, is an incredible team. Um, they do a lot of things very well. They're very athletic. And, and you know, like I said, I, 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 was, I couldn't be anything but proud of the way our kids handled it. Two Siouxland teams in Class C2. Clarkson Lee coming up with a big win and set one off this kill from Bailey Sechi. And I'll have a 1 0 lead over third seed in Oakland. Craig Knights trying to answer in the second set, but this hit sails out and gives Clarkson Lee the set point to go up 2 0. Patriots closing in on a trip to the championship. This kill from Sechi gets them closer, closing out the third set to complete the sweep. And here it is, folks, once again. It's Sechi. She slaps it cross court. The Knights can't handle it. 
And Clarkson Lee has a date in the C2 championship game against Lincoln Lutheran tomorrow. Setchi and head coach Becky Schneider said this win means so much for the Patriots program. It's really exciting. We worked our butts off this, this whole year. Our seniors really deserve it. They've been here four years in a row and they knew that we needed to be down here. So tomorrow's really exciting. We've worked so hard all summer and all season and like they just get along so well. And like, I don't know, just the camaraderie. They have the desire to win and like they, I don't know. Like, it's just so surreal. The Sioux City Musketeers are playing the rest of this season with heavy hearts as they deal with the passing of former Musketeer Adam Johnson. And earlier tonight, the Musketeers played their first game in the Tyson Event Center since Johnson's passing when they took the ice against the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders. Yeah, a memorial was set up for Johnson in the concourse. And on the opening puck drop, neither the Muskies or Rough Riders take this puck. Pick up in the first period, Muskies on the attack, and Cade Shahan rifles one top shelf. And it's 1-0 Sioux City. We go to the second period. Muskies up 2-1 on the penalty. Cedar Rapids on the penalty kill, but this puck's mishandled at the blue line. Jack Larrigan gets a hold of it, heads for the net, and beats the goalie. That'll tie things up at 2. Later on, Musketeers are shorthanded, but they get out on the rush. Jonah Agner gives to Brian Nicholas, who gives it right back for the score. Sioux City leads 3-2. But the Rough Riders would come back and win it 5-4 in OT. We saved the craziest game for last, though, folks. West Lion at Spirit Lake. Jump right in with a minute to go. Spirit Lake just made it 14-13. But on the kickoff, Carson Mayer fields it, breaks a tackle, finds a seam. Mayer, get going, kid. Look out. He's got that running in a hotel hallway speed. An improbable return, and West Lions got the lead. But here come the Indians. Kane Lutz going deep for Ethan Stecker. He holds it in, and in there goes Stecker moonwalking down the sideline. He might as well be. They jump out in front. It's 20 to 19. From 47 yards out, Anderson Trejo to take the lead. It would have been good from 45, but from 47, it's just short. And Spirit Lake is heading to the Uni Dome for the first time since 2015. They win 20 to 19. Do you even have words? Like, I, I, I can't nothing. even believe watching this. I, that I was, don't know. We're getting updates all night from this one, but that's why you got to love yeah, playoff shout, football. Shout out to Matt Heinrichs on Twitter for all the updates for us. That Wild was and Connor crazy. out there getting those highlights yeah, as well. But hey, guys, Connor. fan force all season. We've been asking you to send in those pictures of you with your little blue mini footballs if you got one. But right now, we're going to take a look back at some of our favorite ones from this entire oh, season. Yeah, what do we got, some Jason? Great ones. Well, first up, costumes. They're king in Norfolk for our first fan favorite. Fan Force Picture of the Year. Gabby Friesen, one of our favorites for the many Fan Force pics she sent us. So thank you, Gabby. And tell you what, look at these two cuties from another Akron game. Another one of our favorites throughout the year. Now, we'll be throwing out some basketballs too, I believe. That's coming up next. That's coming up <laughs> soon. We'll see you there. We're the Stanton Cheerleaders. The score corner's up next. We'll be right back. Woo!